Hello and welcome to a numbers edition of Apple a Day. This episode continues my series on numeric functions within Apple numbers. Today I'll be covering the following. Round, round up, and round down. These are three very basic functions, but incredibly useful. Let's start with the round function. I've already got a document open with some sample numbers in the first column. In the second column, entitled round with zero digits, I'll type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. I'll type in round and press return. And you can see that the round function accepts two parameters. The first parameter, num to round, which is short for number to round, is the value that we want to round. I'll select the first cell from the numbers column as the number to round. I'll press tab and move to the second parameter, which is the digits parameter. This tells the round function how many digits to the right or the left of the decimal point that we want to round to. So if digits is zero, it will round to the integer or the whole number, meaning no decimal points. Let's test it. I'll type in zero for the digits parameter and press return. And then I'll copy this formula and paste it in the rest of the cells in this column. Let's check out the results. If any of you remember your old grade school math, rounding up occurs when the value to round is five or greater. Less than five will round down. Let's confirm that by checking the results. 9.8 rounds up to 10, which is correct. 15 stays at 15. Since there's no decimal values, it's treated as 15.0. 100.12 rounds down to 100. 50.5 rounds up to 51. 40.49 rounds down to 50. Zero stays at zero. And 25.59 rounds up to 26. So these calculations all performed as expected. Now let's try rounding to one decimal point. In the round with one digit column, I'll bring up the formula editor by pressing the equal sign. I'll type in round and press return. I'll select the number cell, press tab to move to the next parameter and type in one for the number of digits. And if I press return, you'll see that the value is 9.8 instead of 10. The original number is also 9.8. No rounding has occurred because we need at least two digits to the right of the decimal point in order to round. So again, the digits parameter refers to the number of digits to the right of the decimal point to round to. In order to round to one decimal point, you need at least two digits to the right of that decimal point. Okay, so 15 stays at 15. 100.12 rounds down to 100.1. 50.5 stays at 50.5. 50.49 rounds up to 50.5, zero stays at zero, and 25.59 rounds up to 25.6. So hopefully you can see how that works. If I were to set the digits to two, then I would need at least three decimal points to be able to round to two decimal points, and so on. One cool thing you can do, which is not obvious, is to enter a negative number into the digits parameter. So if you entered minus one, you would then round to the whole number to the nearest 10, so that 19 would round up to 20 and 32 would round down to 30. Let's see how this works. I'll type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. I'll type in round and press return, select the number cell again, press tab, and for the digits, I'm gonna enter in minus one and then press return. And then I'll copy this formula to the rest of the cells. And notice that all the values end in zero. They're all a factor of 10. Okay, so 9.8 rounds up to 10. 15 now rounds up to 20. And that's because it's the five that's doing the rounding. And if you recall, five or greater rounds up. So it rounds up to the next 10, which of course is 20 in this example. 100.12 rounds down to 100. 50.5 rounds down to 50. Same with 50.49. And as always, zero stays at zero. 25.59 rounds up to 30. Let's add another number. Type in 22, and that should round down to 20. I'll paste in the formula, and indeed it does. I'll do one more. Type in 39, paste in the formula, and that rounds up to 40. So hopefully that makes sense. And of course, if I change the digits to minus two, then it would round to the nearest 100. And that pretty much covers round. Now let's take a look at round up. This is different from round in that the number will always be rounded up. It doesn't check for the middle value of five. 
For example, a number like 1.1 will round all the way up to 2. Let's test it out. I'll add a new formula. I'll type in round up and press return. Notice that the digits parameter still exists in this function. So I'll go ahead and select the number cell and press tab to go to the digits parameter. I'll enter 0 and press return. Copy and paste this to the rest of the cells and now let's check the results. 9.8 rounds up to 10. 15 stays at 15 because there's nothing to round. 100.12 rounds up to 101. 50.5 and 50.49 both now round up to 51. 0 stays at 0. 25.59 rounds up to 26. So pretty straightforward. The digits parameter does exactly what it did in the round function, except that of course the rounding is always up. Again, you can also round to the nearest 10 or 100 by entering in negative numbers in the digits parameter. And finally, round down. This works exactly the same, but instead of forcing it to round up, it's now forced to round down. Let me demonstrate. I'll type in equals and then round down and press return. Once again, select the number cell, then tab, and then type in one to round down one digit after the decimal point and then press return again. I'll copy this to the other cells and now let's go over the results. So 9.8 remains at 9.8, as does 15. 100.12 rounds down to 100.1. 50.5 stays as is. 50.49 rounds down to 50.4. Zero stays at zero. And 25.59 rounds down to 25.5. And that's how rounding works in Apple numbers. I know the digits parameter can be a bit confusing. But if you're stuck, just play around with it for a little bit and you'll have no trouble getting it. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. I'm John Martins, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.